Welcome. We're going to have a look at um, PixInsight Desktop and take a closer look at some of the GUI functions that are unique to PixInsight. I've been trying to think of the way to describe how PixInsight works and looks, and I've decided it's probably best to think of PixInsight Desktop as your new operating system. And the tool and processes, which are in the buyer and here, as individual programs run under the PixInsight operating system. These tools being the modular nature of PixInsight and this means that the new tools can be added easily and if you're so minded you can write your own as Sander Paul has with his debayer routine. Many of the functions on the desktop you'll be used to and I won't be looking at these and also not every item just the things that you need to get you going. I've opened an image so we can show some of the things that PixInsight is doing on the left hand side we have the processing console and this mainly shows what PixInsight has done or is doing to your image and as you get used to PixInsight the information contained herein can be of great use you'll use it more and more as you get used to it just click on the background to close in the view explorer we just see lots of information about your image again will be useful for you the more experience you get and in the cleverly named Process Explorer, we have a lift of said processes, or tools as I like to call them. We'll be looking at one or two of these a bit later. And at the bottom, we have your History Explorer. And if we just select the image that we have, we have a list of actions being carried out on your image, and you can return to any state, any time, and if when you get things wrong, which I do lots of times. Again, click on the background to close it down. There are various shortcuts around the desktop. I didn't have time to explain them all, but a lot of them are self explanatory. At the moment, you cannot add any shortcuts, but hopefully, this will change. So, the shortcuts that are supplied by default are the ones you are stuck with at the moment. But um, fingers crossed, this will change. The only thing I will show you is that you can move them around to suit your needs. So, if you're not happy with the position of them, just click and grab hold of the slightly dotted bar at the side and you can move them to suit your own needs. Again, you can move them down the bottom if you so desire. Whatever you find the best is for you. At the bottom we have the workspace selector which gives us access to multiple workspaces. Here we are working on workspace 1 and we can select another workspace just by clicking on it. We can drag any image or process icon to any workspace just like this. Minimize it, hover over the new workspace and it just gets moved over. This is a very nice feature. Use this regular. I'll go back to workspace 1. On the image you have your standard minimizing tools or shade which is halfway in between and we have some zoom tools down the bottom left hand side here. One thing is immediately not apparent though is that by clicking and holding the mouse down on the name bar on the side and dragging across to an empty space you get a clone of the original. Again it uses an awful lot because we can experiment on the cloned image. I'll just leave this open and tidy the screen up a bit and just show you a simple tool. I will launch a process and I will pick histogram transformation tool as a lot of you will be used to similar tools in other graphics packages. Double click on it and it's launched. I'm going to show you the icons that are used most commonly. And we'll start by the box in the right hand corner which is reset which will as it says reset it to its default position. If you click the tick, as they say, will activate the track tool. This is very handy as the tool will follow the image that you are working on when you select it. So we selected this one, DBE, select this one, and it selected the clone tool. We'll go back to the original tool for a second. This icon here is the real time preview. And this is where it differs slightly from other graphics packages. 
that if we click this we are offered a completely independent image but as it says it's in real time so any alterations we make I might just gonna move the histogram a little bit too much the alterations are carried out to a temporary image and when you're happy with your alterations of the temporary image you would close down your preview and we then would need to apply the alteration to the permanent image and you can do this in two ways in the selected image you can choose to click on the square and this will apply it to the selected image I'm just going to undo that alteration by the undo tool or you can choose to click on the small triangle down here which is called the new instance tool hold on your mouse button and drag it to the image you want to apply it to and let go you'll soon get used to this and um, strange enough I find it's the way that I implement most of the tools particularly handy if you work on multiple images and what I mean by that is if you wanted to apply that same histogram stretch to this image you can just grab hold of it again go to the image and voila something else a new instance icon does is if you grab hold of it with your mouse again drag it to an empty workspace area and let go we've created a process icon and what this process icon does is save all the current settings in your tool and you could even save this down here for when you close your program down or you can move it to other workspaces but well, I'll show you what it does if I close this down all the settings have been saved so I could move this to another workspace if I so desired to work on other images or I could just double click on it again and it brings the tool back to life with the settings saved probably not too important with the histogram transformation tool but some of the tools particularly with the DBE tool and a couple of other tools it's very handy to save the settings you worked hard to achieve one other icon you come across is the global apply which I can show you from the image integration tool on another workspace number four and this is the button you would use if you need to apply the process or tool to multiple images and this particular tool I have multiple images listed for integration so because there isn't a single image to apply it to you would apply it globally and there's two or three tools on the Pixie Insight that um, have this icon okay back to workspace one lastly we're going to have a quick look at previews some of the tools in Pix Insight are very processor intensive and can take some time to implement and can be a benefit to apply some of the processes to a small preview where you can fine tune your settings okay I'm just going to undo the histogram stretch for this image and close this one down okay we can create a preview by using this icon up here click on it and draw a box around the area we want to create the preview you can adjust the size of the box or move the box to wherever you like and at the side here you can see the preview is listed on the side information bar your process can be applied to the preview by grabbing hold of the process icon and dragging it to the preview and when you are happy with your preview so I wouldn't normally use the histogram transformation tool with a preview because the histogram transformations are very quick but it's just easier to show you with this tool when you're happy with the alterations that have been made you just get back to the main image and apply it to the main image there is a lot more to Pix Insight and have fun learning um, but this was just a short introduction just so you get the feel of things see you soon